Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully, your weaving's been happy. What I have for you today is how to stitch or double stitch a modified jawbone. This is the one we'll be working on today. Stealth Olive, Olive Drab, and Shockwave with a olive and black, and the stitching in the middle is moss. Now I'll let you see this. See how thick it is for sizing purposes. See the back of it. Okay. I did one the other day in a black and gray theme. Very subtle color differences. And here's one I did in kind of a fire or lava. The accent color in the middle is olive or lava flow. But if you want to know how to make it and get all the tips and tricks and insights and commentary that I put in all my videos, stick around. We'll get right to it. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got my jig set up. Everything's sized out. Okay, I'm going to start off like I do most of my videos. Shameless plug. This is a four-cord cobra belly. I'll leave the link for the tutorial in the description below. It also, it, it'll show you how to do it with a three-cord. This is the newest one bracelet video I've done. This is a... I'm calling it a Megalodon, or a Trilobite double jawbone. I know it's kind of hard to see, being that it's, it's, it's a very dark and it's black. Here's one that I've done in color. This is the one that I actually made for the tutorial. I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Okay, um, let's see. What we're going to be doing today, I showed you in the introduction, but I'll show this again. Um, here's one that you can actually see in color. Like I said, it's a double, it's a double stitch. It's kind of, it's very subtle on this one. But you can see that the orange, but then there's also right here is a yellow stitch. Now I know it kind of blends in. We can get that to focus. It kind of blends in. Sorry for the shadow, folks. I'll get to that in a second. Um, it kind of blends in with the cord, but it's just subtle enough that it gives it a little extra detail. Now, the one we're doing today is going to be an olive theme. Like, this one is a, a black and gray theme. The one we're doing today is an olive theme. Okay, now, all that said. Um, I'll say this. Like, I, I say this in the beginning of a lot of my videos. Like, the shadow I just, you know, noticed. You see the shadow right here? Okay, I apologize for all that. I say this. I am not a filmmaker. That's not what I do. I don't know how to do all this stuff. I'm kind of learning as I go. Trial, trial by fire, if you will. Um, I, I know the basics. And I'm working on, you know, better lighting and camera and things like that. So, you know, with, with that, I say that up front. So I apologize for the bad lighting, you know, not staying in focus, me getting out of frame, video quality, sound quality, all that. I apologize. This is not what I do. What I do is I make paracord bracelets, and this I know how to do. <laughs> okay. Now, with that said, I, I'll throw this in there. I, I say this quite often, and, and, and I know I have some people who say, man, I love your videos. You explain stuff. You know, sometimes I feel like I over-explain stuff. But I, I try to explain thoroughly what I'm doing. That way, instead of just saying over here, under here, pull tight, I try to tell you what I'm doing, but why I'm doing it. That way, you'll understand, hopefully it'll give you a better understanding of why things are done that way. And you go, hmm, and you can learn. You know, I've struggled trying to learn how to do this because a lot of the videos don't tell you all these little tips and tricks and insights. They just say, over here, under here, pull tight. And I don't want my channel to be that way. I don't want to just teach you how to make a paracord bracelet. I want to teach you how to make a paracord bracelet. You make, does that make sense? So that's why I talk a lot. 
I, uh, my videos are a lot longer than most people, and that's why. Um, I make the braces. I, I say this, and I, I don't mean this is not to downgrade anyone or any channels out there. Most of the time what they do is they film them making the video. They turn the microphone off and they film it, and they just accentuate their hand movements, and then they come back afterwards and they do a voiceover and narrate what they're doing. I don't do that. I turn the camera on real time, mistakes and all, and start weaving. And, you know, if you watch enough of my videos, you see me make mistakes, but I catch them. And I go back and I fix them. And I tell you, you know, and you see, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I do, do not claim to be perfect at this. But I've learned things, and I want to impart to you what I have learned through my struggles. So you don't struggle. Does that make sense? So we all can produce a better quality product. Bam. There's that. That's my spiel. That's my my sales pitch, if you will. Okay, now, with all that said, let's get to this. Specifications. This bracelet is a four-core strand. If you don't know how to do that, I put it in the cards along with the tutorials for the two bracelets, but... I, I put, there's a link in the description below to my core straight up, core strand setup playlist. Go down there. Four core, six core, even got an eight core. Oh, I don't have any, Just, you'll check it out. You'll see what you, whichever one you need, watch. Um, the ones that are labeled deep cut, that's why I sit and talk and explain. The shallow cut, that's just, here, 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 bam, and quick and simple, in and out, right? Okay, but this is a four core strand. So, briefly, do a cow hitch at the top, come down, go through the top of the buckle, come back up and do your double cow hitches and you come back up. And if you've seen enough, if you watch my strand, you know, core setup videos and all that, you know I put these total knots here at the top. Right, and that's what locks it into place. That's the way I do it. Now, I don't know a lot of many, a lot of people that do it that way, but that's the way I do it. Okay, now, with that said, what's next? Um, I'm gonna be you today. I'm using a. This is a 15 millimeter, which equates to a 5 8 inch buckle. Right, this is a black tactical buckle. I get these. You can get these on Amazon, but. I found the, I found that the quality of those are not the best, so I wouldn't recommend them. But I, I, I get these from Paracord EU, and they are listed as a 15 millimeter black metal safe buckle, right? Okay, there you go. Now I'm not getting any kickbacks, I'm not getting any promotion, nothing like that. I'm just, that's the ones I use, if any, and I have a lot of people ask, that's where I get them from. 15 millimeter black metal safe buckle, Paracord EU, bam. I got different sizes, but that's the one I'm using for this. Okay, now, let's say next. The add to, for me, anyway, the add to, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Most of you probably understand what I'm talking about, but if you don't, when I say the add to, I'll explain what I mean by that. We all know that if somebody gives you a wrist measurement, in this case, it's for a seven and three quarter inch wrist. You cannot measure your jig out for seven and three quarters inches. You have to add to that seven and three quarters to get the actual bracelet circumference sort of fit. Because of, and that, that's all, that add to is determined by the thickness of the bracelet. And that's the main factor. But there are other factors. You know, your weaving style, how tight you pull it, all that kind of stuff comes into play. So it's going to it'll slightly vary. But for me, and the way I weave this, this bracelet, a modified jawbone without stitching, key, pay attention to that, modified jawbone without stitching, I do inch, one and half inch add to. Make sense? So for a seven and three quarter inch wrist, I'm going to measure my jig from connection point to connection point at nine and a quarter inches. Because I've taken the seven and three quarters and I've add two at an inch and a half. Right? Okay. Now, for this one, because I'm doing the stitching, here's your tip. Here's a tip of trick. Catch this point. 
if you know you're going to do stitching on a bracelet, most often you need to size up slightly, just a little bit. Some bracelets, not so much. Some bracelets, either. there's one bracelet you got to size up. I want to say it's almost a half inch. I've had to size it up just because of the stitching causes it to draw up. But anyway, but on this one, I know I'm going to stitch it. So I add an extra eighth of an inch. So instead of an inch and a half, I add to an inch and three eighths. I had to do my math real quick there. An inch and three eighths. Does that make sense? Because I know I'm going to stitch it. Okay, now, let's see. The next thing, well, 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 let me say this. While we're on the subject of stitching, I'll say this. I've said this in some of my past videos, and, and I'll emphasize this. If you know that you're going to stitch a bracelet, uh, I, let me let me back up. Let me back up. We all know, for those who watch my videos, we know my operating principles are neat, clean, and tight. And I often get comments, man, your bracelets are so neat, or they're so clean. No, no, no. I, because I just pay attention, attention to detail, and I make sure, I watch what I'm doing, and that's my, I want it to be neat, clean, and tight, right? Okay, so, with that said, I pull my knots as tight as I can get them. Now, I know some knots you can't do that way. They'll capsize, or they'll distort, and you can't pull them that tight. But the ones that I can, I will wrench down on them as tight as I can get them. Now, if I know that I'm going to be stitching the bracelet, I will not pull it as tight as I normally would. Why? Because I want there to be a little bit of looseness in there. So when I come back with my stitching needle or my fid, it's easier to get it to go through there. Because if you pull that thing as tight as you can and you come back to try to stitch it, it's not, it's not going to be so easy to get it through there. And you're going to tend to poke through your cord and we don't want that. That's not neat or clean. So we don't want that, right? And on this bracelet, specifically this bracelet, the way it's woven together, as you begin to stitch down it, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Does that make sense? Most bracelets do that, but I've noticed it more so on this one. So, you know, all the little when I go to weave it, I don't pull it as tight. So I leave a little bit of, it's not gaps that you can see through, it's just, it's, it's looser. Because when I come back to stitch it, all that looseness gets tightened up because of all the extra stitching that goes in there. And it does, it tightens it up. And I can tell a difference. And that's why I say, you know, size it up, me, me. It may not be, the numbers may not be exactly the same for you because of weaving style and all that, but... Without stitching, inch and a half. With stitching, inch and three eighths, right? Eighteenth of an inch, or an eighth of an inch, just because of the stitching. Okay, now, with all that said, what's next? Cord, 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 cord. Um, I said this is for seven and three quarter inch wrist. So I've got just under nine feet. Nine feet over here, and what, what, what we got, I'll show you. This is shockwave pattern. This is zigzag that goes around the cord. It's in olive and it's in black, right? But I've got nine feet of that. And then this is stealth olive. Now I know on camera it kind of looks black, but it's actually, it's, it's very, very dark. It's like olive, olive drab, stealth olive. <laughs> I mean, it's as dark as you can get. When I first got it and bought it and looked at it, I was like, that's black until I held it up. You can see there's a slight difference. See, there we go. It's in focus. See, that's stealth olive, and that's black. So there is a difference. But without anything, it just kind of looks, it almost looks black. But that's what I, that's what we got. We got nine feet and nine feet. And I've melded them together. The last video I actually put on the channel was me melding these two together. And you can see how tight I got this. Right? And there's that meld point. It holds. This polyester is not on. It's holding. People say it can't be done or it's not strong. What? I beg to differ. It's done right there. Okay, now, with all that said, let's get to weaving. This one's not hard. This one's pretty straightforward. If you know how to do a basic Solomon bar, a cobra knot, Solomon knot, they're all the same. They've labeled all different things. That's all the same. That's all this is, but with a slight twist. 
Uh, let us, let, let's not say twist, a slight modification in how it's done, right? It's not very hard. You, you got the four core strands, and you just do it a slightly different way. Now, this one, there's not a lot of tips and tricks in actually weaving this one. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Once you do it, you'll say, oh, yeah, I got that. No problem. But I'll show you one of the common mistakes that I often make. When I get to going, and I'm not actually, you know, because... I tell you, I'll be honest with you. I'll sit and weave one of these, and I'll have something. I'll have music playing, or I might have a movie or something going on the computer screen. So I'm kind of, my focus is, you know, half between this, half between that, right? And sometimes I'll, I'll lose focus, and I'll make a mistake. And on this one, I'll show you the common mistake I always make. It's, and if you, if you, if you're not, how do I say this? If you're not paying attention when you make the mistake, you won't even realize it, and you'll keep going. Because it's so subtle in the way it looks on the bracelet, you won't notice it. And and if you do notice it, and you've done, you know, 15, 20 repetitions, you're like, oh, gosh. But I'll show you one of the common mistakes I make. So hopefully you won't make it. Okay, so let's zoom in and I'll show you how to do this. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's not anything. It's not like the last one. This one's pretty simple. That last one, the uh, the megalodon. Yeah, that one was kind of complicated to try to explain. This one, not so, not 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 so much. It's pretty easy. Okay, here let's let's back out. Let's see where we got right there. Okay, we got enough room. Okay, all we're gonna do. I'm gonna start on this side. This. Here, I'll go ahead and show you this. Okay, if you see this one right here, we've got the black down the edges, and we've got the accent color. That's what I'm going to call that, the accent color running through the middle. Okay, whatever you want your accent color to be, that's the chord you lead with. It can be on either side. It doesn't matter how you set it up. It, you know, left, side, right, side, it doesn't matter. But the one you want to be in the middle, that's the one you're going to start with. You understand that? Okay, now, with that said, this is all you do. Take your... Your lead, your accent, and you go over three, because like I said, we got a full core strand, right? We're going to go over three and under one. So you're going to cross over to these, these three, and then you're going to go under one. Make sense? Do we see how I got that? I'm going over those, those first three, one, two, three, and under one, and we're going to pull our slack out. Actually, and I'll show you this. When you go to pull your slack out on this one, reach under here. Reach under this cord. It's just a helpful tip that I've learned. It'll, you do it, and it'll make sense. I'll tell you why in a second. Right? Now, we come back, and we take this one. This is going to be the, the, the color that goes down the edge of the braces. With this, what we're going to do is we're going to go over one and under three. Right? The same, the same lane, the same slot that this went through is the one we're going to go through here, but below it. Hence why I say pull this cord. Let me show you again. Let me do this all again. I'll show you again. Take this one. Go over three and under one. We got that? And when you pull your slack out, Reach under underneath this one. Why? Because if you do it this way, you're going to get it wrong. But you you want it this way. You want this to be on top, so you reach under here. You just reach around, reach under here, and pull your slack out. That way, you're you're already setting yourself up for the next move of the weave. That way, this cord is already on top of. You see what I'm saying? This one is on top of this one. And that's why you pull it that way. Okay? So, now this one, what we're going to do with this one, we're going to go over one and under three. The same slot over this first outer core and then under these these three. Right? Does that make sense? We're going over this first one and we're going under these three. Hopefully that makes sense here. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Because I know these colors are probably not. That's all there is to it. Now, here's the thing. You're going to take this cord. And I can show you like everybody else. You pull out the slack. Pull all the slack through. 
And there's your end. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to come up through here. Let me back up so you can see. You can see this. You're going to take the end of this cord we just ran through. Goes all the way down, along, and then here's the end. And you're going to come up from behind through this loop that you've created. Make sense? And you're just going to pull it. Well, that's just like, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Push it up, and, and then pull it. And like I always do, I put my fingers here and push toward the middle as my hands are pulling out. We see how I did that? Now. Like I said, I'm stitching this one, so I'm not going to pull this thing incredibly tight, right? Now, I'll show you that one more time. We'll zoom back in just a little bit. Now, like I said, whichever one you want to be in the center, that's the one you lead off with. You're always going to lead with this accent color. Over three, under one. We got that? Over three, under one. All right? So we're going over these first three, and we're going under this last one. And what's the tip? To go ahead and set up for the next part, go underneath here with your hand and grab back here on the back side and pull your slide through. Make sense? And I always do it like this. I always get it there, and then I just push it up and create that little loop on that side. That way it gets everything out of my way, right? And now we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to show you how I do this. just makes it faster. This is the stuff you pick up on. You do it enough. You know this. And I'm sure all y'all, y'all figure this out. This ain't anything. It's a tip, but it ain't anything, you know, whatever. Take that cord. We're going to go over one and under three. Up under this one. So we're going to go. Over that first one, and under these three, right? And this is what I do. I go ahead and reach up there like that and grab a hold of it. That way it's already going through there. It's all in one move. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it all gets done in one move. I can grab it with my finger and just pull out that slack. Push it up. Pull it. Remember, I'm stitching it, so don't pull us so tight, Tindall. Make sense? We'll do it again. We go over three, under one, reaching underneath this cord, pulling out your slack. Now we're going to go over one, under three. Right? We get that? Over three, under one. Pulling it out from underneath. And this one goes over one and under three. I'm going to go ahead and stick it through this loop and grab it. Pull out the slack. I mean, if you're familiar with a cover knot, Solomon knot, solver bar, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, you'll say, oh, I see how it is. It's just a slight modification. That's all there is to it. All right? I'll do it one more time. Over three and under one. Reaching underneath. Pulling out your slack. And, you know, I do it all in one motion. Since you need this loop over here, just kind of see how I did that. That's what I do. Now we'll go over one, under three, and come up through this loop. And just take out the slack. Push it up, loose, loose cinch, push it up, and cinch. And you see how the pattern is beginning to form. Okay, now, I'm going to show you the common mistake that I always made. That, are, that I make. I still make it. I'll do this. I'll take this one because I'm going over three and under one. Over three and under one. And coming underneath here. Common mistake that I'll do is when I go to do this one, I'll try to do over three and under one. No, no. 
over one, these two chords always go through this same slot right here. But just a natural habit, you're going over three and under one. No, 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 no. But that's what I'll do. I'll do that and then I'll come up like normal, pull my slack out. I'm getting tangled up down here. And I'll pull it. And you see how it, it still has this little, here, let me zoom in. Maybe you can see this a little bit better. But you see how the, the correct work side is, is still kind of this darker color is angled in. And over here where I've done it wrong, it still angles in. So your eye doesn't catch it as, as quick. And you just keep going and all of a sudden you look back and you're like, ah, oh, that's a common mistake. Because your accent goes over three, under one. When you come back with your main, your other chord, you naturally want to go over three and under one, and then it throws you off. It throws it off right here, and you weave, and you you won't catch it because it's a, it's a very subtle mistake. But it's right there, so you just be mindful of that and don't make that mistake like I have done a thousand times doing this weave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back out, and fix my mistake. Here, let me back back out. All right. Now, like I say, over one, under three, and up through here. Watch your slack. Loose cinch, push to the top, and cinch. Don't cinch too tight, Tyndall. You, you're going to be stitching it, right? That's all there is to it, and you just repeat to the end. Over three, under one, reaching under. Pull out the slack. Over one and under three. And going up through this little loop. Pull out your slack. Push it. Loose cinch. Get there. Make sense. You set a pattern for me. Over three, under one, under the other chord, and then over one and under three, and up through the loop. Pull out your slack, low cinch, pushing up, cinch. Over three, under one, underneath. Kind of give it the little loop. That's what I always do, that little move right there. Just kind of do it and give you a little loop. Over one. Under three, coming through this loop and pulling out your slack. And then right there where that little meld in these chords is, you can see it. It's right there where I melded those two chords together. Be mindful. Now, if you watch the video I made, I try to get the burrs and the snags out, but just be mindful. Push it up, cinch it up. And that's it. That's all there is to this. Now, when I get down to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off, and then I'll show you how I begin the stitching. But there you go. It's not that hard. This one's a pretty simple one, and if you get the stitching right, this bracelet looks great. You, you, you pick the right color palette, and you get that stitching right, man, that thing, it will pop, I'm telling you. Yeah, there you go. Say, very subtle. It's just the de details in them colors. Slight, subtle difference in them colors. But it pops. Now you use some, you know, very contrasting colors and it would look great too. And you could do, instead of having two different colors stitching, you can do all the same color stitching. Or you could do, I'll say this to you before, before I get further. I mean, I'll mention it now. Obviously the orange, is one piece of stitching. I mean, and there it is. It's not one down this side, one. No, it's one piece of stitching that does all that orange. 
And the yellow is another piece, obviously. You could do just the side stitching, or you could do just the stitching in the middle. That's why I call it a double stitch, because it's got two, you see what I'm saying? Two, ask, two places you can stitch it. But, let me finish it out, and I'll come back, and I'll show you how to do all that. But stick around. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got weaved up to the very end. I'm going to show you how I uh, I finished this one off. It's not too difficult, but I would highly recommend using your fids. Using your fids. Because we're going to have to get in between. You know, it was a full core string, so you got two on one side, two on the other. And we're going to have to get in between there, right, right above these cow hitches. And it can be tight. And in order to, to weave it all the way down, it's going to be a very tight fit. So, fits, 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 fits. Okay, I'm going to leave it on the jig to do this. That way, it'll help hold it, and I can get through there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, normally I would have this thing, like I've said before, I'd have this thing angled up so I could see it. So, I'm working at a funny angle, so you'll have to cut me some slack. I'm going to turn this thing sideways so I can see it a little bit better, because I'm looking at it from this angle kind of straight at it instead of looking down on it, which I normally would be. So, I'm going to finish this off. We just continue with the same, we've always, same like we did. Okay, let's see. Over three and under one. Like I say, you got to get down in between there, so. Here, here's a tip. Here's something I thought about the other day. I noticed I'd done this, and I've never thought to mention this. When you go to, it's not, not so much here, but Sometimes it does come into play. When you go to stick your fid through there, take it like this. I found to do like this. Instead of trying to stick it straight through, stick it up here like this and kind of poke, you know what I'm saying, push it through like that. That way you run less of a risk of poking your cord. Now, right here, we're going to have to run it straight through. So, But when I got to about right here and it kind of got tight in the, Core strands are real tight because I, you know, I put a lot of tension on this and I, and then I put my fids on there. I noticed I do that and I thought, you know, I need to mention that in my videos, but stick it up here like this and kind of angle it in there, but not so much right now, but we're going to try to get this in there without poking my cord. Yeah. So we're going to go down through there. We're going to pull it through. Now, like I say, we, we run it through that same spot and it gets kind of tight, so. You need to take, here, let me zoom in so you can see this. You like that, right? That's my bullseye. I try to keep that center center frame, so I'll, I try to stay in frame. But if we look right here, we've got two dark cords on this side for the core strands, and over here we've got these zigzag ones so you can see the difference now you can see there's a gap if you look right there my handy dandy laser paracord pointer you can see right there there's a gap and that's where we're going through that little hole you see it that's what we're going through so you know there is a hole there what you can do is you can take this this bottom one and this top one and kind of Grab them with your hands and pull them that direction, and that 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 will help. Kind of widen that hole up, make make space in there. If that makes any sense, if I can get a hold of it just right, like I said, I no, normally don't work at this angle, but take these two cores and pull them this way, and it'll, it'll kind of open up that hole a little bit, and potentially. Make it a little easier to get through there. Alright, pull that out. Now we're going to come up through this hole. We're doing the same thing we, we were doing before, just at a different angle, so it's going to kind of look funny to you and to me. Alright, pull it. Now we see how we can still see these core strands down here, but we get, we got to do it again. So it gets, it's even tighter. That's what I'm saying. It gets tight because you're trying to weave this all the way to the bottom. So we're going to come over here. We're going to do this one more time. 
Oh, I say this. You remember I, I, the common mistake? I said the mistake I always make. I get to do the, and yeah, I made it. As soon as I turned the camera off and I sat down to start finishing out the weed, I made the mistake. I weeded about two or three times and I stopped. I'm like, wait a minute. I just made the mistake. I warned everybody else not to make, <laughs> which I thought was kind of ironic. Okay, so we're going to come over here and we got to go through this one. And I'm looking, I'm looking down up under the bracelet to make sure I haven't poked anything before I run it all the way through. Okay, now it's starting, it's going to get to tight, it's going to get tight. Cause we got to run this thing one more time. Actually, we're probably going to have to run it through a couple more times, but... You're careful when you get it at right, at just the right angle, you get the tip through there. And once you see the tips through there and you haven't poked anything, then you put the pressure on it and get it through there. And like I've said, there's a, about three inches between this piece of wood and the bottom of this. And I know a lot of the professionally made and bought jigs, there's not much clearance. I made this one on purpose so I could do this like this. Okay, so we're gonna pull that through, and then we're gonna come up. Am I gonna come up? Let me see. Let me make sure I'm gonna do this the right way. Yeah. Hopefully. Let me look at it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it right there. Now, what I'm going to do here, this one, like, like in all my videos, I, I want the cords on the back side so my cut and burns will be back there. This one, it's already back there. This one is coming out at an upward angle. So, all we're going to do is going to run it back through them. In between them two core strands, those two dark ones that are right, and right above his cow hitch, just like we normally would. So it'll get it on the back side. But this, like I said, tight fit. This is where your fig comes in. Now, now cut me, give me a little grace, and I'm going to try to get this through here. And like I say, I can't see. I'm trying to let the camera see what I'm doing. And I kind of, doesn't. it's not very conducive to me actually seeing what I'm doing. I'm going to spin it so I can see the back side back here. Okay, it stayed there. Like I said, I'm holding this bracelet with one hand because I'm about to put a lot of pressure on this fit to get it to go through there. There we go. I'm going to pull it through. And that way, it keeps in doing that one last one, and it, it's tight. And I'll go ahead and say this, because of the, the, the nature of the way that's done, it causes these last couple of ones to be really packed in there. So when you go to do the stitching, yeah, it, it can be tough because it's tight. Okay, but we got it through there. Now now that we got everything through there, I'm going to take it off the jig. Like I say here, let's back out. You just see this. Now, I didn't pull the jig as quite as tight this time as I normally do, but I did put some tension on it. So I do this in all the videos. I'm going to undo this, and you just... You, you'll probably see this thing move. This piece right here move. You know, you'll feel all that tension release. I didn't do it that much that time. But, there we go. There's that. Now, let me get my jig out of the way. We're going to look at it. going to lay it out here. Now, obviously, it's not straight. It's kind of, looks like a drunk snake. But we'll straighten all that up. Oh, look at it. Everything looks good over there. You know, and I constantly check it when I'm weaving it. And I'll look at it. I'll, I'll look down at, at kind of at this angle down the sides to make sure everything looks straight. Straight enough. It could be a little straighter. But it's, it's pretty straight. Meaning all my little tension consistency. I've said this in other videos. It's not that you had to pull tight. Or not pull tight. 
What you have to do is every time you do it, pull the same amount. Tension consistency. That way all your little, all the knots on the edge, you don't have them going, one sticking out, one knot. Boop, 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 looking like a heart monitor. Boop, 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 boop. You know what I mean? You want them all straight. That way it looks good. Okay, so we got it all in there. I could probably do it one more time. But I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it like that because the last ones I've done, I wait, I put one more repetition in there and it makes it really, really tight down there at the bottom. I'm going to just leave this one like it is. You see what I'm saying? There's a little bit of room left on them core strands. I could. I could get one more repetition in there, but it would make this stuff right here so tight that it's really hard to work with. So you can see the core strand. But I'm going to leave this one like it is. Them last couple of ones, they were pretty tight. Okay, so how, this is how we're going to end this one. We're going to flip it over, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Same principle, like in all my head. I, I mean, this is basically a Solomon weave. Like, like in my video, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the uh, description about how to cut and burn a Solomon and hide it. That way you don't see it. You always want them on the back side. You got a display side or the front, and then you have a non-display side, the back. Here, let me zoom in. And you want that display side to look good. You know, Try your best not to have a cut and burn on the edge, or definitely not on the front, and not on the edge either. You want them on the back so they're not seen, right? So what I'm going to do on this one, here, yeah, I'll just, let me see. I'll zoom in. Hopefully, you'll, you'll, everybody will be able to see this. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see with those colors. Let me see if this light will help. A little bit. If we look... Yeah, maybe that'll help right there. Basically, what I'm going to do is both these cords, this one, this dark one right here, I'm going to run it up under this this green piece going this way. I'm going to run it right back up under there. And this, this striped piece, I'm going to bring it down and run it up under there too. Does that make sense? It's not hard because that's the very last one. So, you know, when you run it up under there, it's easy. It's going to, you're going to have enough give to get up under there. And then it's really easy to tighten it up because it's the very last one you just did. So that's all we're going to do. I'm going to lay it out here on the table. I'm going to come over here like this. And like I've said in some other videos, if need be, you can always take that buckle and bend it. Or you bend that bracelet that way. You can get the fit, instead of trying to dig the fit up under there like this and shovel it under there, no, bend that out of the way so you got a straight shot, so you don't poke anything with it. Does that make sense? Now, this one shouldn't be hard. I should be able to do this pretty easy here. Let me back out a little bit. That way, I can kind of stay in frame. Yeah, this one's not too hard to finish up. Just kind of get it up under there. See, it come right through. Just push it through. Well, you slack out. I'm being mindful. This thing has a tendency to want to get a twist in this right here when you do it. So you kind of twist this cord as you're pulling it, and it'll it'll pop right through there. Makes sense. Now we're gonna do this other one the same way. We're going to run it right up under there. Bend that buckle out of the way a little bit. See? Make sure you don't poke anything and just push it through there. Huh? Now. Because. Now what we're going to do is. We're going to turn around and we're going to look at it. 
I ain't so much worried about getting this all tight right this second. Why? Because I'm it, tighter it is, the harder it is to get that stitching needle through. But when we go, we, we want to get all this slack out of our way. Put them back out. We want all this slack, all this slack, all this excess cord out of the way because we don't want it get it tangled. We don't want it getting tangled. But we don't want to do our final cut and burn yet because that big lump of plastic will hinder you from getting your stitching needle through there possibly. You see what I'm saying? So, I always come back about an inch and a half. Inch and a half, why? That leaves enough slack in this cord that it's not going to accidentally get pulled back up through where we want. You see what I'm saying? If it gets pulled loose, you, you got some, you got some leeway right here. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to cut both these. Just kind of sit them off to the side. That go in the scrap bucket just a second. Now we're just going to cut and burn these. Why? So they don't get all frayed and nasty. And, you know, these... I don't do the, the technique, you know, blah, 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 I don't do that because that, that right there is going to get cut and thrown in the trash. That's not long enough to say, but I'm doing that just so, you know, whatever. So we'll sit that off to the side. Now, these right here, I can always show you how to cut and burn the ends of these. Just kind of rotate your finger, get it hot, melty. Wait just a second and grab it here and just, not a lot of pressure. All you're doing is shaping, tapering that melted plastic right there same thing with this other one and I always do this before I put it in the scrap bucket let it cool off for a second grab it and just do it like that that's all there is to it I feel like what's the dude's name Bob Ross the one that did the paintings happy trees Oh, happy burn. <laughs> All right. Let's put that back in my little feed holder. I'm going to put these in my scrap bucket, which is right here. Okay, now we're going to do the stitching. I'm going to back out. <coughs> kind of got caddy wampus there, didn't I? Oh, well. Okay. Like I say, like I always say, when you go to stitch, clear your workspace off. That way your, all that excess micro cord doesn't get wrapped around things. You go to pull it and you, you knock your, your cup of coffee over or, you know, whatever. Now, if you can see what's outside of the frame here, you'd say, yeah, he's one to talk about having a clear workspace. But, you know, in general right here, I should have did this before. I always say it before I lay that bracelet down, this place I down, I used to kind of wipe off with the dust or anything. There we go. Get this out of the way. Okay, I already got my piece of micro cord cut and on the fed and all that. Okay, now for this, <coughs> what we're gonna do, I'm gonna I'll explain to you how this is gonna work. This is not hard, it's not hard stitching, it just it takes some time to do because <coughs> you gotta stitch every single one of these side knots the little the, the dark piece that comes around wraps around right here you got to do every single one of them you know and the longer the bracelet the more you got to do then you got to come back and you got to do the center part so you know like i said like I, i'll show you on this one see how you got the orange it's on both sides and that's that piece of orange is one piece that it alternates both sides. Like if you look at the back of it, you'll see it's just the opposite. The orange is down the center on the back. And the yellow that's on the sides, on the display side, is running right here. Now that's one piece of yellow, and it's one piece of orange. It's two separate pieces, obviously, because it's two separate colors. But it's two pieces. It's not a piece of orange on this side and a separate piece of orange on this side. No, it's one piece. So this piece of microcord is going to be, it's rather long. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I, like I say, you know, I've said before, I said, I said again, I would rather have scrap excess that I have to cut off at the end than to not have enough to finish, especially when it comes to micro cord. 
that's the worst thing in the world. You stitch, you take all the time to stitch it, and you get down to about an inch left, and you're like, I don't have enough. So, I've cut this piece right at seven feet, which is probably going to be about a foot longer than I need. But, we're going to do this. Okay, now I'm going to show you. You see on here how it's how we've stitched. Now, on this one, I come across this first one. I'm not going to do it on this one. It, it just kind of, from to me, that, that right there just kind of looks out of place. This one big stitch. So I'm going to start over here on this one. You see what I'm saying? This would have been, this would be the first, but I'm going to start on this second one down. Start here, and we're going to, it alternates back and forth. And all we're doing, all we're basically doing is following this black cord through the weave, but we're going to stitch it into that. You see what I'm saying? It just follows it down. And if you notice, I'll show you this. We'll get our needle. Get this out of the way. Now, we're going to come over here. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this. And, you know, and this was for a customer. So, you know, I know it might be a little hard to see because of the colors and all that. But we're making this for a customer. So we're going we're gonna to work with what we got. And hopefully this will be able to see this. Okay, like I said. We're going to, obviously, we're going to anchor back here on the back side, but we're going to come out. We're going to follow this blue, or this blue, this stealth olive is what it is. Stealth olive piece right here on the inside. So we're going to come out. We're going to go, if you look, that hole right there. See that hole? That's where we're going to come through. Right? And we're going to, it'll make sense. We're going to flip it over, and what I'm going to do, this is the way I do it. Now, you can anchor this any way you want, but I'm going to anchor, anchor this one and the other piece right here in the same place. That way I have one cut and burn. I'm going to go up under this piece and this piece. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go up under here. So I'm going to angle it like, like, I, like I said when I ended it down here. You need be, you can bend this thing. See what I'm saying? Kind of bend it back. That way you can get your needle straight under there as opposed to trying to shovel it under there and risk poking your cord, right? So but this one, like I said, I knew I was going to stitch it. So I didn't, it's, it's not that tight. I mean, it's pretty tight. I don't know. I mean, that's relative depending on how tight you pull your weeds. But for me, this is not tight at all. So I should be able to get this under here. What we're going to do, you'll see, I'm going to go up under this one and the one right above it. Now, be mindful. Now, look at it. You see how this one, this top one, it's going through these cool strands right here. So when you go up under this one, you don't want to go up under it and then jam into this one. You kind of want to go this direction so you can get up under both of them. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So you can see. You can see it coming out under that first one. Now I'm going to get it up under that second one. See that? It's up under both of them. And it's coming out of that second one. And like I said, you, you take that buckle. Kind of bend it back. That way you don't poke anything. And then we get it through there. Push it. Put, and like I say, before you start that, push that back down right there, and it creates resistance. So when you go to pull it, you got some resistance. That way, when you, you get to the end of the micro cord and you pull it all the way through, you don't accidentally pull it through, and it come all the way through, and you have to go back and redo it. Get close to the end, just kind of slow down. Maybe about an inch and a half. Inch and a half. Mm. 
what, 40 millimeters? I guess that would be the equivalent. Okay, now, what we're going to do, like I say, this is not hard. You just got to get the angle correct. Okay, now this, this first one's pretty easy. Like I say, we're just, all we're going to do is follow this, this dark cord. We're going to follow it all the way through the weave. Right? But this little hole, you can see that hole right there. Just going to go through this hole right here. See what I'm saying? You see where I went through? You can see where I come out. Right? Not too hard on that first one. Pull the slack out. Mindful of the twist. Always be mindful of the twist when you're stitching. You notice there's a twist in there. Take this in and you spin it whichever way it needs to be spun. Before you try to put any tension and pull this tight, grab this one. Pinch it with your finger. Your finger. And then take this. You'll see. It'll kind of, it kind of seats in place. It kind of disappeared there. We're trying to get it to seat right here on the inside, right? Okay, now, here's where the fun begins. Getting this thing through here. Okay. Let me look at this, make sure I'm going to tell you the right. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This can be, the first one, this first run with this, with this, it's not that hard. But when you come back to do the second run, that's, that's when it can start getting confusing. All we're going to do is follow the edge of this cord right here, this dark color cord. We're just going to follow the edge and we're going to go through right there. You see how this, this stripe piece right here, we're going below it. Down here, right, right in this area right here. Okay, now we're going to come out on the back side in this general area right here. All right, now let me do this. Right through there. See where I went through it. You see where I come out at. Now this is what I'll point out to you. If you keep track of this, as you do this, and keep track, you'll, you'll do good. That first one, it's, it's right, the first piece of micro cord, it's right up here above this first dark piece. It's up above it. Now we can't see it because I done pulled the slack out, but that's where it is. And it goes through this hole. Okay. The second piece, when it comes through the box, you know, like it is, it, it comes through, it's just above this piece right here. You want to stay above, when I say above, I mean closest to the buckle, above the piece you're following. So we're going to come, we're going to pull our slack out and we're going, our micro cord is going to run right above that piece and it's going to go through this stripe piece. Right? It'll make sense. It'll make sense. We'll pull it through. Pull my slack through. Mindful of the twist. Again, holding this until we get a couple of down into the bracelet, we're going to hold that so it doesn't, we don't pull it through. We get to right there. We see where it's running right here. All right. Now, this is going to be very subtle color differences, but that's the nature of the way I'm trying to do this person. So, we're going to pull that one. All right. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here. See where it's coming out above this piece right here. Coming out right here where the needle is. We see it right there. Above this piece. And that's the piece we're following. So we're going to follow the top of that. And we're going to go through this little stripe loop. 
Now be careful, and we're going to come out right there. And we're going to stay on the inside. It'll, it'll make sense. Just watch. You can see the tip of it sticking out right there. Like I said, I didn't pull this one very tight, so it, this should should be pretty easy for me. But as I as I do this more and more and more, that bracelet's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter because all those little gaps going to get filled in. Mindful of our twist. Just give it a little, little tug. And we'll flip it over. We see where it's coming out at. All right. We see it's coming out right above this piece here. So we're going to run it right here on the inside. And we're going to go through right there. I see that one's not wanting to sit right. But that's the nature of these bracelets. The very top of this bracelet. But we're going to come around. And we're going to go through right here. And we're going to come out on the back side, basically, where this piece is coming out, in that same area. If I can get that out of the way. If I can get that out of the way, keep it in focus. And like I say, folks, I'm not a filmmaker. And it's not going to stay in focus, but we're going to come out right here, above this next piece. See, there's the one we've got above this black piece of stealth olive. And the next one we're going to come out right here above the next piece of stealth olive. You see what I'm saying? You see how the oranges are? It's all, that's all you do. You're just following that piece of stealth olive through the whole weave. Okay. So, I run my cord out to the end. Find my needle. I'm going to come over here. And I don't know, I'll say this I found the way I weave, if you go straight in, but let's see, a little bit at an upward angle, not much, very little of an upward angle. And here, let me just get it through there and it'll make sense. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? The bracelet's running straight, but that needle's got just a little bit of an upward angle pointing toward that top buckle. Just a little bit. Not much. And if you look at it from this side, let's see. It's slightly angled toward the center of the bracelet. That's the angle you're trying to get. But you got to get it in there just right. But it'll go through there. It's not hard. If you, if you get that angle just right, you kind of feel for it. And you'll feel it pop. And you'll see it come out the back side. Make sure you get jammed in your cords. And then just push it through. We slack out. Mindful of the twist. Okay, now, I'm going to show you this. We're going to pull it. We, we want to get it to kind of sit down in that groove. So we give it a little bit of a tug on that back side. I know, you can't see it. And it sets it. Subtle color difference right there, but it's there. Tell you, it's gonna be like this this one right here. It's such a subtle color difference, but that's what we're going for. You see that? Now, we, you see where I come out at? Right there where I said. Now, all we're going to do is we're going 
We're on the we're on the this cord, this dark cord here. We're on the top side of that, so we're just gonna follow it over to this side and go through this stripe piece and come out right there at the top, right? When you get to your mind blow your twist and we see where it is let's see and I'll show you this I'll show you I'm gonna go through again you're just gonna follow follow it down and go through right there at that angle that I showed you slightly upward Slightly toward the center of the bracelet. Man, I felt it go through. Look at that. And I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to show you this right here. Mindful. It's got a twist right there. Okay. Watch this. You see how it's like it's loose and it's sitting there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it. Watch it. It'll pop into place. See how it just pops in place? Now, I know on camera you can't. There you go. Kind of seats, seats down in right, right in there, in between them two dark plate pieces, and you can see it from the front. But that's all there is to this. This one's pretty easy to stitch. Now we're just going, we're going to follow it up. We'll come out here, we're going to stay above this piece of dark, and we're going to go right up in this area. We're going to come out in the front. Oh, wait, whoa, no, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad. We're going to follow it up and go up under this, oops, sorry, go up under this stripe piece. Keep going up under this, because we want to keep this free, because we'll come back and, in the very end and cut and burn that. So we're going to go through Right there. Pull up the slack. Mind pull of that twist. Flip it over. Just follow it around. Oops, sorry, I'm all out of frame. I apologize. Follow it around and go right through there. The same angle. Slightly toward the center and slightly upward. Yep, that's not going to go through as easy, is it? I've said this before. Sometimes if you can't get it to go through in that on th this way. Come around to the other side, kind of. Kind of start it and kind of, you know. Yeah, I can see it now. I can see there's a hole right in there now. You know, but obviously when you make your little hole, you come back and go back to the correct side. See that? We just pull it through. That's all there is to this stitch. The stitch is not hard. It's just tedious. It takes a little time because you got to go every one of these knots. But like I did on that last one, once you get it there, watch it disappear in between these two dark pieces. It just kind of seats down in down in that little groove right there, and then we come back to the back. Come out here. We're going to follow this piece, staying above that piece, and we're going to go through right there. All right, see that? That's all there's to it. Pull the slack through. Mindful of the twist. Following it around. Going through right here on this side now. See? Oh 
Put your slack out. Mindful of the twist, you get to right there. Just kind of give it a little. It'll pull it right down in a little groove where it needs to be. And that's it. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll run this one out. And when I, I'll run this one out to the end. When I get down to the end, all you do is you follow that last piece. Now remember, it was a tight fit to get to there. So this last run through is going to be kind of tight, but it's going to come out, and you're just going to, you're going, it's going to end right here where these other two do, because all you're doing is following this dark cord, right? But when I get close to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you, and then I'll show you how I start the stitching on the other side, okay? But there we go. Okay, folks, I'm back. I, I done stitched it all the way to the end. Now, it's kind of hard to see. It's very subtle color difference. It blends in. We can get this focus. See, you can see it right there on both sides. Runs down. Now, I've got the one last stitch to do to wrap around this last piece. And I'm going to show you something. This is the way I've, I've been doing it. When you come down, like I said, up through here, the, the piece of micro cord is on the top of the 550 that you're following, right? Toward the top where the, you know, where you started weaving. So when you get down here, that last piece that you're following is right here. And you would think to do it that way. Well, what I've been doing. Is moving these two out of the way and running it up under here. Does that make sense? <coughs> and the reason I say that is because anticipating when we get finished with the whole thing, we do our cut and burn to have that piece up under there. So when we, it's not running right here on the top and you know, potentially, when you burn it, you might burn that piece, and you got one little piece that falls out. Does that make sense? Run it up under there, that way it's part of that meld, if that makes any sense. But anyway, you're just going to run that last piece out, and all you're going to do is you're going to just follow it around. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm over here trying to show you stuff, and you can't see what I'm talking about. But we're going to go... We come out, and instead of passing above this piece like we have been doing, when I say above, I mean this direction. We're going to still go above it, but we're going to go behind these two pieces that are hanging out. Does that make sense? And then we're going to go through like we did all the rest of them. That's all that is. And right through there. Right up under that little zigzag piece, like we did the rest of them. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry, I'm all out of frame. I'm sorry about that, folks. Excuse me, but you see how, right there, instead of it running here, running up under these two pieces, and then we're just going to wrap around and do the, like the last thing. Now remember, <laughs> like I said, this is the tight fit. This last spot is going to be tight. And I'll say this too. Like I, like I said, you're going to size it up. But I, I size it up about an eighth of an inch when I do it. And when you, I tell you, I don't pull it as tight. And when I stitch it, it, it gets tight. Yeah, I, I can feel it. I, I noticed that. When I stitched down about so far, I stopped and I felt up there and I felt down here and I could tell it's tighter. It was harder. You know, that's what I was talking about. It gets, it tightens itself up. All those little micro cords, you think, ah, oh, it's not like, yeah, but it's all of it running down in there. It tightens everything up just a little bit. But let's see if I can get this one through here because this one right here 
It's the last one, and it's a tight spot, and it can be tricky. Oh, I'm out of frame. I'm sorry. But all you're going to do is just follow it through, and you're going to come out right next to this piece, because that's the one you're following. Trying to, trying to do it. Sometimes you might want to take both of these and kind of pull them out of the way so you can see. There it is. See where it comes out at? You see, it's going in the same spot we've been doing all the rest of them. And it comes out right there. We're just going to pull a slide through. I get it in the spot and just pull it. And it'll come seat down in there where you want it to. I just like the rest of them. Sorry, I'm all out of frame. I apologize. Like I said, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm trying to I'm trying to watch the bracelet and the tape monitor in front of me to keep everything in frame. So it's not the easiest thing. Doing these things is not that easy. Now uh, go ahead and burn that. Put that over here in my my bucket. It's, for anybody who doesn't know, I've got a I got three separate containers down here. One for micro, one for core, one for solid colors, and one for you know multicolored cord. And then I got another one behind me with black. You know, because I I do use a lot of black. Okay, now with all that said, we got our other piece. I've already got it cut and everything. Now this I'll show you. Let me show you the difference here. Where's this is what I was stitching with, olive drip. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to stitch with this moss. And they all kind of have the same thing. Now I know it kind of looks similar to this olive here, but it's a little bit lighter. See what I'm saying? Like I said, it's going to be a very subtle difference, but it's going to be a, an, an olive green themed bracelet. I think it's going to be just enough. Once you do do a couple of runs down through there, it's going to look good. Let's get that out of the way. Get our scissors out of the way. Get it. Whoa, whoa, I dropped it. Okay, we're going to come back and we're going to... Yeah, that's in there. Okay, now this, I'll say this. First couple of times I, I made a bracelet like this and did this stitching, that first run of stitch micro cord no problem but when i come back to do this i got it was confusing because you're doing the same stitch obviously the front of this bracelet and the back of the bracelet is the same thing it's just the colors are in, in reverse now you you've done you, we've already done it done this way and everything's orientated that way right and you think oh it's the other side just the mirror image no everything's like the opposite. If 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 the stitching was the same on the back side of the bracelet, you would you would start at the bottom and work your way. You see what I'm saying? Let me show you that again. This is where I started stitching this front side and going down. 
But to do the other, if it was going to be the same exact type thing, you would start up here. But you don't, because I want all my chords to end kind of in the same spot. And that's just the way I do it. But I did, and it, it was confusing. I know there's two different colors, but it's the orientation of the way you're doing it. You're running that chord through the same spots. You're just basically doing it backwards from what you just did because of the nature of the way the weave is. Does that, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. But it, it was confusing. I'm just saying, in my mind, I was doing this, and I kept going, yeah, it's not, I'm not doing that right. And it's because my mind, I was still thinking, I'm, you know, the way, the nature of the way I was doing it on this front side, you know, th or this side stitch down. But when you start doing this other one, it's not the same. You're not trying to, this is the non-display side. It, it just, I don't know. You do it, you'll see what I'm talking about, hopefully. It, it, you'll be like, yeah, it's backwards. It's not doing exactly right. But I'm going to do this the same way. I'm going I'm to go up under these same two chords just like I did. But we're going to do the stitch just a slightly different. I'll show you. I'm going to get orientated here. Like I said, just in the same spot, same one we anchored this olive drab piece is where we're going to anchor this moss piece. We're going to go right up under here. And we're going to, we're going to want to come back. Once we come out up here at the top, we're going to go this direction. So, you know, I would recommend on doing it on this side of this piece you already have. If that makes any sense, hopefully. I try to explain this, and it makes sense in my head what I'm saying. I, I don't know if it, if it, all the all the viewers make it makes sense to them, but I'm trying. It's coming out, right? You see it coming out. Okay. Now, I'm going to push it through. Like always, press that down. And then pull it through. And kind of hold this one too off to the side. Hold it so you don't accidentally pull it through. You close this slow down. Slow down so you don't yank it through. Okay, now what we're going to do is we'll follow now. This time we're going to be following this striped piece. We're going to do this side first. And what we're going to do is, like I said, okay, on this back side, how the micro cord was above the piece we were following on this on this front side because everything's the opposite. It's going to go below it. So we're going to we're going to this piece right here is the one we're going to follow. We're going to go through right here, but when we come out, we're going to come out below the striped piece, below it, back this way. Makes sense. So. What we're going to do I'm going to go through right up here at the top right in between those two core strands that are on that side let's say can I do it? yeah I can do it this way maybe We'll see if I can't get up under, up under it. That way it'll come out 
instead of coming out up here, it's going to come out right there where I want it. And this might not, let's see. I say sometimes you can come in this way. That way you can get in that hole and work it. There we go. Now you can see it. Now you can see there's a hole right through there where I want to go. See, I'm going below this striped piece right here. All right. You see where I went through at? You see where I'm coming out at? Just below that. First strike the piece running that way. I'm going to pull it slack there. Because like I said, I get confused when I do this. You know what? I, 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 I did it the wrong direction. I thought something didn't look right. Okay, let me fix this. I did this the wrong direction. I thought it didn't look right. I come out, I was supposed to come out over on this side and follow it this direction. Not come out here and follow it this way. I'm gonna be below that there. I just let me let me correct myself. Hang on. Like I said, it's gonna be confusing because this thing like I said I ain't perfect. Hopefully I got it through there without jamming it through anything. If I did, it'll go right, it'll pull right back through. Now if I got it, if I stuck that and feed through something, it's going to stop. Nope. I got it through there. Just right. Okay, now, let's try this one more time. Okay, okay, we're going to try this again. Sorry, folks. I'm going to say I ain't perfect. That's confusing doing it. Coming that second run, it gets confusing. Okay, what we're going to do, actually, we're going to come to this side over here. So we're going to go through this little dark loop, and we're going to come out right here. So we're going to run through this back side right here. Right there. That makes sense. Right through here. We're following this strike cord. We're going to go through right here. And when we do it, we're going to go under this piece and that piece of micro cord. And every time you do this, you're going to go under that piece of micro cord that's already there. That's the attention to detail. That way it looks uniform all the way down. Right? Just get it right, right there. If you get it at the right angle, it'll go right through there. See how it's going, my needle's going up under both the thick cord and that piece of micro cord. Bam. We'll pull the slack out. There we go. That's how we want to do it. Sense. Okay, now we're going to follow this stripe and we're going to go through right here. 
and we're going to come out I'm going to come out right here in this area, right here. I could do it where I was already at, right there. I think jam it through here and go. Throw it through, see where I come out. I'm just following this stripe. Oops, sorry, I'm out of frame. Just coming out right there, following that stripe piece around. Once I do this two or three times, I'll go, oh yeah, okay. My mind will reverse everything, and in, 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 you know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing, it's like you're doing a stitch. Man, that's so subtle. You can almost not even tell a difference in all those colors. But that's what I want. Okay, now, what we're going to do, we come out right here, we're going to follow the bottom side of this stripe piece, and we're going to go through right here, up under the dark piece and that piece of microcord. We see that? Bam. Pull it through. That's all this is. You just got to be very careful and pay attention, especially on this second run, because your brain's like got everything in the other, you know, and now you're doing it, everything's backwards. Anyway, that's the way, that's the way it is for me. Right? And you see where it's coming out at. Right? Now, all we're going to do is follow this stripe piece right up under on the bottom side of it, and we're going to go through right there. Now, <laughs> if you look, if you can see this, if it'll come in focus, you go through right there. But when I come out, I'm actually coming out below that black piece and below this piece of micro stitching. Because they're all kind of right there. You'll see when you try this, they're all kind of right there in the same area. This is the back side, but no matter, I come out below that piece of micro stitching right there. And then you just pull it through. Mind for the twist. Now, see, you don't notice it so much, but once I do a little bit, it, it, it's not. It's not so much the color you're going to notice, it's the break in that pattern. you got a stripe pattern and a little solid piece. You see what I'm saying? Running down through there. That's all there is to it. And you just follow this stripe piece of rail right through here, and up under, up under that and that micro cord. Just like that. Pull your slack out. Mindfully twist. Let me get this out of the way. Mindful of the twist. Did I do that? I sure did. Look what I did. I was supposed to go through this loop, not this one. I skipped one. So we'll just run it back through. Just run it back through and fix our mistake. Okay. Follow that strike piece around.
I put under the the big dark piece and then the micro cord. So I'm just to it. Once you, once you kind of get get going, do it a couple of times, it it starts to make a little sense. And then you know, give it a little tug, and it'll seat it into position, just like it did on this front side when you. Pull it, you do the same thing back here, and it seats it down in between those knots right here on this edge. And that's what gives it some definition. Plus, right here in the middle, too, I'll show you when I do this one. We go through, follow it up, we go through right here. Now, this one might be a little difficult, because this is going to come out where these two where these two cords are. So, we got a whole bunch of cords right there, and we don't want to. They, they all kind of just be mindful when you run it through right here obviously don't poke the big the thick cord but don't poke the other piece of micro cord either you know try to be careful okay now this is what I was going to show you when you get to right here mindful you were twist obviously but when you go to pull this And you get it right there, give it a little bit of a snub. And what it's going to do, it's going to create, it's going to, it's going to give some contour to these cords, if that, that makes sense. It's going to create like a little bit of a, a dip right there where all those cords come in. Every one of these little sections. And it just gives it a, a, a bit of texture, I guess, if you will. Let's see. We're going to follow this one around. Going up under. And this thing just... It don't know what focus is. There we go. We're going to just follow that green around on the bottom side. And going through right there. And up under that piece of micro cord. And it's going up under that piece of micro cord right there. So that's it. That's all there is to this one. Mindful of the twist. Oh, what we got going on here? How's it getting stuck? All them twists. And just like we did on the front side, like I was saying, when you get get to right there, you pull it down, you give it a little snug, and it'll seat it right down in that crack. And that's what gives it that's what gives it the de the definition of a contour. Makes it look cut like your muscles. That makes sense. And again, we're going to stay on the bottom side of that next cord and go right through here. Like I say, the more, the more you work down, you'll notice it's tighter this time because of what you've already done. So, you know, be mindful, be careful. So we all went through, and you see them coming out, like I said, below that piece of micro cord, right I know, it won't stay in focus, but my needle is coming out. Here, this piece of micro cord is coming out below that piece of micro cord right there. And that's all there is, man. That's it. You just and you just run this all the way down. 
And now that I've got a few runs, a few reps done, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Again, when you get it to right there, watch that last piece. So I pull it, and you see it move a little bit, and it, it tightens it up, gives it a little definition. Yeah, I can feel that already getting hard. But we see. All right, here's the first stuff we did around the edge. Now we're doing this. This little kind of zigzag back and forth. Anyway, that's what it's going to look like on this side, the display side. But that's it. Yeah, those colors almost, they almost, mm, they're so, they're so close to each other. Maybe if I would have, perhaps, re sorry, perhaps reverse the colors of that micro cord. You know, put this one I'm doing now, put it right down the edge. And I thought about that, and it, what it is, is, the, the zigzag piece, the, the olive in that, this, and that olive drab, they're so close that it's hard to tell. But we're going to go ahead and finish it out and see what it looks like. It definitely got, it's definitely going to be olive. But when I get done, I'll come back and I'll show you. We'll, we'll cut and burn it and do all that. Everything like that. So, yeah, stick around. Okay, folks, we're back. I done got it stitched out to the end. I've already went ahead and cut and burned the top where I anchored in the micro cord. I've already got it done. I was just going to come back and show you the cut and burn, and we're going to give it a size test, if you will. But I'll zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to zoom all the way in. And you can see the side stitching over here is olive drab and right there in the middle is moss and it's such a subtle difference in between those oh, man, it just, my camera just will not stay in focus look at that might be because I got it zoomed in all the way let's zoom out just a little bit But we can see it. It's subtle difference in them colors. It's a little, just a little detail. But I figured I'd just do the cut and burn. And I, I'm going to show you. I'll show you this. Let me zoom back out just a little bit and I'll show you. Okay? All right, you've heard me. You want your sides to be all even down through there. And if you look at this very last one, it sticks out just a little bit further, right? So I'm gonna tighten that up first. Before, always do that. Before you cut and burn this in, all your main cords down here at the bottom, flip it over and look at it. Make sure everything's tight and the way you want it, you know, and then give these one more tighten up, tightening, if you will. That way everything's gonna look good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create this big lump this right here on the side. So let's see. We're going to get out my handy dandy jeweler's pliers. I might be able to do it right, right here. Let's see. Is this going to pull that all time? Yeah, I think that will. Yeah, a little bit. We might have to do it from right here. We'll try to tighten up this piece right here because it's right there. But because it's wrapped around right there, you can't do it. So I'm going to have to pull it from right here. Yeah, see, it pulled it in just a little bit. See if I can't get up under it. Get up under it right here. Let's see. 
Oh yeah, that did it. Now I can tighten this one up. Let's pull that one up. And it'll take out that big lump right there. Oh. Now, let's see if we can't tighten up that black one right there. Let's see. Yep, we'll do it this way. Since it's this piece, this dark piece that's going across, and then it ends up right here, we'll tighten it up right here. Grab a hold of that. And I'm pulling it this, dire this direction. And that's going to tighten up this piece going across there. If I can get up under it like that. All right. Now, see, now we just pull this and it'll pull it through. I'm going to get down on it right here. All right, now when we did it, we're going to go back and look at our micro cord. Make sure all that's tight also. Now that piece is not sticking out quite as much. It's still sticking out a little bit, but it is the end of the bracelet, so, you know. But there you go. That's it right there. Now let's cut and burn this. <coughs> and as always, hey, your smoothing tool on the ready. We'll back out a little bit. Um, I've been trying to use this leather stamp with heart. I am pair cords of kindness. If it's big enough, which these the cut and burn on this bracelet's usually not quite big enough, but I, I'll attempt it anyway. But have your smoothing tool ready. Okay. Now, like I said, once you once you cut these. Don't, don't handle it too much. You never want them cores to go back up under there. It's, oof, that's not good. Now. Now while it's still hot, yeah, it kind of, you can kind of see that little heart shape. If it'll focus, you can kind of see it right there. Here of kindness made with love. Tender kindness. Okay, now. Since this is not made for, to fit my wrist, one thing I can do is put it on the sizing mandrel that I have. Like I said, I've, I've mentioned this in some of my videos. A big, it's a solid piece of wood. Now I put them. It's it's what it's actually used for is for jewelry. You put like metal jewelry on here and kind of pound it down. It'll stretch it out a little bit. That's what this is for. But you know, you come through and I put the marks on it and it, it sizes it. That way, I can make sure before I send it off to a customer, I can, I can take a picture, I can send it to them, but also it lets me know that it's the right size. It builds, it, this is a, this was a confidence builder for me. When I, somebody pointed me toward this thing and told me how they used it, I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, I made a couple of bracelets for a wrist I'd never seen and I'm never going to see. You make sure it fits, but you gotta get, cause I put these, you gotta measure it yourself, so you got to make sure you get your measurements on here correct. <laughs> right? But let's just say, like I said, seven and three quarter inches. Right? There's a seven inch, there's the eight inch mark, and there's the nine inch mark. You can always take it and kind of push it down a little bit. It'll, it'll stretch. People say the stuff doesn't stretch, whatever. Put it on something like this. 
If it's if it's a snug fit, like I've made bracelets for myself that have been a little too snug, I can put them on this and kind of force it down on there and just let it sit for a day or two. I mean, it'll stretch it out. When you take it off here, you put it on, you'll notice there's a difference in the size. But I call that I call that a seven and three quarter inch bracelet right there. But there you go. That's how you make a double stitched modified jawbone. So give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment below. Please leave a comment. Let me know uh, what kind of tutorials you want me to see me do. And with that, I'll end it like I end them all. Keep it neat. Keep it clean. And keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.